bienvenidos, welcome and welcome back, guys. So, uh, today I had a good one. We'll see if I get to it, though, because it uh, seems every time we schedule something, we're not a company that schedules too many things. You know, it's emergency here, there, hey, my walk-in's down, our AC's not working, you know. Those, those things don't always go as planned. It's just like whenever they quit, they quit. Not a lot of people do uh, maintenance, so we don't get ahead of them as often as we want to, but it is what it is. So uh, we're scheduled to go out two hours away. It's Monday morning. We thought we could get away with it, but of course, everybody's calling right now. So me, my brothers at another call, and then we have another guy. We're trying to knock out all these uh, little reach-in coolers we had a, like a handful of them that went down. My dad is still on the way two hours out. So he's gonna be there because there's there's already stuff going on over there. So we're supposed to go and replace a an AC unit uh, that we had condemned. Uh, I don't wanna get you know into it, but if you guys watch my videos, you might figure it out. Uh, so we were gonna put in a unit that they bought for another location. So of course it doesn't fit, have to deal with it. We gave them an F off price, you know, and uh, apparently they took it. So we have to do it. And I think we were still very competitive with other companies. I don't think anybody wanted to do it. So we're going to go do it. It's going to consist of redoing the curb itself because we we can't even put the curb adapter where they want us to use a curb adapter. And they bought the unit with, with it and everything, and it's not going to fit. So we're going to be redoing the curb that comes out of the building itself. So we were all heading that way, and then, like, everybody called. Um, I'm assuming there's, like, an inspection going around. That's usually when these calls come in like this, back to back. And the one that I'm going to, I have two to check. The one I'm going to right now, I'm more than sure it's just dirty. Uh, they had mentioned it to me, like, a month or a month and a half ago. A month ago, maybe. No, a month and a half ago when I did that press on their walk-in cooler, when I used the press tool, he's like, hey, this was, this one's been messing up too, but I don't know if they put a call in, and I'm like, I haven't got the call. I can't I can't really touch anything. And that's one of the locations where they have several companies. Um, like if one doesn't answer, another one comes out, or like whoever's on manager duty that day calls whoever they, they please or whatever, so... I don't want to touch anything and then get blamed for it or uh, not get paid. So I was like, yeah, when the call comes in, I'll, come, I'll, I'll do it. Never came in. Finally, I guess it finally quit. Uh, and I know for a fact that thing is, is the condenser's plugged up. So we're going to clean that one out. Hopefully that's it. Then I have another one, but it's on the way to my to that two-hour away you know, unit that we're putting in. So we might be able to do that one on the way over there. And I want to say that one's a leak. So I'm going to do a quick leak test. Hopefully I can find it. Uh, if it's in the uh, coil, because I have I found them in the rail of the uh, top of these uh, make lines. So they usually they're, uh, the inside bottom cabinets have coils, traditional coils, evaporator coils that you can take out, cut out, replace if you need, need to or patch or whatever. But if it's in the rail where they keep the condiments and stuff, that's just uh, a frosted wall. There is no changing out that coil. I even called one time for a different brand and they kind of laughed at me on the phone. They're like, yeah, if you want to go in there with a, a grinder or something to cut out a, a section, if you know where the leak is, cut it out, patch it, but then you have to put the metal back together make sure it's insulated and all that good stuff and they're like it's gonna run you up they're probably just gonna buy a new unit which um at that one they were built into the wall so there was not much i could do and they just condemned it uh lost that customer don't know what they did but for these they usually just buy a new one so i'm gonna go leak test see where i can find this first one i'm more than sure it's gonna be uh just me cleaning the coil, so we'll see.
right, so this thing was still smoking. I don't have one of these, unfortunately. Uh, this one was bad too. Usually I change everything out in that little box anyway, but I have one of these. This is super old because I don't buy that brand anymore, but I have one of those. I usually have these, but at the moment, I only have the 130, and this is like 243. So I'm about to go pick one of those up. Maybe I can test it with one of these. I've had these in the van for a while, or this one. This one is a start. I can wire it up for 233. Just to test it. So dirty coils equals hot compressors equals burnout. Stuff like that happens. So I couldn't get it to start. Uh, and I, every time I filmed, it wasn't doing the noise that it, when it tried to start, it would just rattle and, and never start. And I would have loved to have gone with original, like if I had one of these, but this, like I said, first time using it, it's giving me the, the microfibers I need. So if we check it, And I wired it up the same, so 255, I needed 243 to 290, and then 40, that's what I needed on that one. So, you know, never I replace these. I usually have boxes extra sometimes, and I'll replace the whole box, but you know, replace the components inside, which is these two, and the potential relay. So I had everything try to to kind of just have it hooked up outside and it didn't want to start so that compressor burnt out basically and i got to get a quote see if we even have that local because they want it fixed asap more than likely they might buy a new unit that's pretty old uh they've been buying these new digital ones with three compressors to handle each individual section of that cooler because right now it's one handling about three sections so the top rail the middle where it catches the food that you know pizza toppings and then the uh, the bottom cabinet it's a lot of work for one compressor so now they have one or they buy one that has three not a whole lot i could do there it's it, it's looking like a burnout so we're gonna have to be careful when we replace that compressor uh i did not wash my hands well enough or at all my wipes are in the back that thing was nasty if you guys do uh kitchen refrigeration you know what what that is what that's all about but uh they wanted or the manager there wants it fixed asap but I, I have to go through approval from everybody else above them so i'm gonna get a price like i said more than likely they'll, they'll probably buy a new unit they always do that so we'll see what happens uh like i said and they they pay attention to when i go out there for simple calls right they if i go out there and they see me clean a condenser with a brush and stuff then they're like, oh, we need to do that, right? So I didn't really show it, but when I opened the front compartment, because they're already pulling it out, like they knew I was going to get behind it. And I was like, well, I'm just going to check the condenser first. I opened the front compartment and they had put a filter there. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe they put it, you know, maybe they somebody cleaned it and they put it. Now uh, I peeled it off and it look, looked like somebody, I went with a brush real quick but I could still see all the gunk and uh, dust in between the, the fins. So it was plugged up from the inside. They took off the surface dust and then they put a filter over it. <clears throat> but that, you can imagine if it was overheating before, now it has a filter over it, how bad that's gonna be. So, you know, I, condemn them, <laughs> I commend them for trying, but they should have called me when that guy brought it up a month and a half ago because it was still working at that point we probably could have saved it from burning out and this is why i tell them we can do maintenance we can prevent all these things with preventative maintenance but they don't want it now they're going to be buying a new compressor 
Uh, yeah, I wish I had the original parts, but you know, I had those spare ones on my van. They should have started it if it was working. It kept clicking and trying to turn or trying to run and it, it just couldn't. So, you know, they're gonna have to deal with that. I cooled it down too with some water and rags. That, that's all they had. This location does not have an ice machine. I normally like to put an ice, uh, a bag of ice on it, but they didn't have an ice machine. And I'm not gonna flood the kitchen. It's right there where they're making the food. So I'm not gonna put a hose to it. Uh, it was cool enough for me to touch it. Uh, it wasn't, you know, making the water evaporate anymore. It could have still been hot, but it did try to, to, to run. So had it started even for a few seconds, if I heard that compressor start, I would have left it off and then gone to go get, you know, the original parts. And then, uh, you know, just waited for it to cool down some more. But it's, I didn't get, to, like I said, I didn't get to get it on camera, but it sounded really bad when it started or when it tried to. So just gonna replace that compressor if they approve it, see what they want. And now I'm gonna go to another one, which I'm assuming it's a leak because we went out there a couple months ago. Uh, to top it off and they just never approved a, a leak check so I'll do a quick leak check today that's our call there it's not a call back it's just a it's been a couple months at least and it was working I told them you probably have a micro leak or something really small I don't have to put much but it's down again so let's go see what it is unless it's something completely different because I thought this one was just going to be a dirty condenser and it turned out you know, something else, to be something else. So I'm gonna get on the highway, let's go. All right, so I kind of got water in the tip, so I'm gonna grab a new one just to be safe. It's only going off on the coil, and I sprayed all the valves down. There's nothing leaking, because a lot of times those leak on me. So we're gonna grab fresh tip with a filter in it, and ch double check again. But if it's a coil, we'll see what they wanna do. So I left there um, to gas up, obviously. That one, so I have this weird thing with my field piece. Now it's not um, only on field piece. I've had other leak detectors that do the same thing. Right now I'll turn it on. But it, it was being super sensitive today. Now I don't know if that's because there was a lot of uh, refrigerant built up in the cabinet but I had the door open the whole time and I tried it even after uh, I was done you know I was there for a little bit thought it aired out and it was still going crazy now like I said I've had Hillmore I've had Ellie Tech I've had uh, Inficon or whatever those uh, you know D-Tech ones are but I had the the basic uh, heated diode heated diode one and they would they would all go crazy every now and then no explanation at least to me and then um 
and then it would work like another day. So I just used this one like two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago, something like that. And it helped me find a really hard to find leak because it was a newer unit and it had a leak in the very corner of the uh, condenser coil. And I patched that one up. So it helped me there, but today it was not really helping too much. So let me turn it back on. So if I give it a little, so imagine me going through the, uh, the coil. If I went too fast, it kept going off. Now, if I go down to even low, still going off so I'm not sure what that is like I said it's happened before with other leak detectors that's why I like to visually get some bubbles on there and do it that way but without taking out the evaporator it's gonna be hard to to do that but the times that it did seem to work it kept going off by the evaporator coil didn't find any leaking TXVs because I've had that I didn't have a leaking solenoid. I've had that issue too. Nothing bubbled up there. I was getting like some micro bubbles here and there on the coil, but I like without taking it out or completely disassembling that, I don't think I'm gonna get a good visual. So I just got confirmation that that coil is two to three weeks um, lead time. So if they wanna approve it, you know, we can get that going and get that ordered. But when I go to pull out the old coil, I, I do like to get a confirmation. So I will either, what I used to do is braze uh, pressure, uh, service ports on each end and, and pressure test it and see if I can get bubbles or, you know, we can throw it under water and see if it bubbles up. So usually I like to confirm. I don't like to just replace parts. So. More times than not, if you guys have ever worked on these prep coolers, these make line coolers, whatever you want to call them, um, the evaporators always leak. So a safe bet is that coil. Uh, worst case scenario, like I said, if it's in the rail, if it's in the wall, because it has two other sections that are where the wall frosts up, if it's in there, more than likely they're just gonna, we're just gonna condemn the unit because then they're not gonna wanna and I don't want to cut open a unit like that to re-insulate it and put it back together and to even know where the leak is. Like that, it circles all the way around in one section, in the middle and on the top, it, all the way around. Like how are we going to find a leak there? So we'll do that. Then we'll pressure test it. See if we don't have any other leaks. You know, more than likely, like I said, they might get a new unit. You know, that's fine. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was a weird thing can see it going up again uh, I'm gonna charge it it is half I mean it doesn't give me a number but it's half at least so let's charge it and we'll try it out another day and we'll see but it's not this has worked fine for me but if it keeps acting up then I'll reach out to Phil Peace and like I said it's happened to me with my Hillmore and some other ones that I've had uh, where just goes crazy one day and then the next day it's fine all right so now uh that that one ac unit that we we're supposed to do i got we got rescheduled for tomorrow morning because our guys went out there and looked at the curve again with the person we subcontracted to help us i don't do duct work i haven't done any of that kind of stuff since i was in school so we if we don't know how to do it walking cooler like doors and you know things like that uh duct work curve adapters curves uh we don't build any of that stuff so if we need modifications we subcontract so our subcontractor went out there he's also our crane guy and he does some hvac or construction stuff and they said no we don't have to we don't have to rebuild or replace the curb itself which is what they were offering to do uh, they were like, we can make the curb adapter work, even though it's bigger. And they're going to take all the supplies they need, you know, fit it on there, seal it up, whatever they need to do. Because to me, if 
the curb adapter is not the same size. I was like, how are we gonna bolt it down? How are we gonna seal it from the air, you know, leakage and all that? But they looked at it, they verified what they needed to do, and we're gonna all go out there tomorrow. So bring you along for that. They're gonna do that, and then we're gonna set in the, the new unit. Or take out the old one, set in the new one, and we'll, we'll see what happens. So right now I'm leaving my calls. It's already uh, lunchtime, I might take a lunch. I need to go get, um, I don't have any disconnects on me, so we gotta get that. So I'm gonna get some disconnects to stock up. We're gonna use one at the, uh, at the AC that we're putting in. And you know, just make sure we have everything we need for tomorrow. And then we'll put that unit in there. And uh, hopefully everything goes good. All right, so I kind of shook it around, try to recalibrate it. I think we're good now. I cracked that one open. So that one's cracked open. These are not. Wave it around, it's not doing it anymore. little residual there I don't know man I don't know why that happens right now like I kind of shook the shit out of it like that and it was doing the beeping again then it just like stopped and now it's back to normal I don't know that's weird it's not doing it anymore Weird, but I've had it happen with the uh, other brands that I have too, so I don't know. 